Today's driver of the day is Lando Norris, a British teenager enjoying his time at McLaren. Our driver profile today is on Lando Norris, who drives for McLaren. He's born in Bristol on the 13th of November, 1999. Here he is in the papaya colored racing kit of the McLaren team that he races for. He is a smiley youngster. I really enjoy photographing him. He scrubs up all right too. He's very photogenic. He won the 2017 Formula 3 European Championship. And then in the following year, in 2018, he backed it up with a second to George Russell in the F2 Championship. Pretty cool looking rooster and a real character on social media. Has a great presence and uh, has, a, has a marvelous following, both in Britain and around the world. Now, when he originally first uh, drove the McLaren, which was going back to Belgium last year. Now, I wasn't at that race, but he, uh, he drove under the number 47. I was actually at a friend's party somewhere else in the world, and I couldn't do that race or the following one. But here he is in Japan, racing in the 47. Of course, now he races under the number four for McLaren and is enjoying his time. I remember this day, this was in Abu Dhabi, and I found him when I was doing my track walk, he was doing one as well. And he'd just been announced as the driver for McLaren, the second driver to partner Carlos Sainz. And I found him on the main straight, and I just mentioned to him, hey, well done, you must be excited. And he gave me this beautiful big smile and continued on with his track walk. This is his father, and I've seen his father at a couple of events this year in Singapore and Silverstone. He also owns a scooter company called Pure Scooters. Lando, he is uh, seen here with one of these scooters. He brought it to the Austrian GP and uh, rode it in the paddock. It's a good piece of kit, and I think some of the other drivers were also interested in it. Here's his mother, Siska, uh, once again taken uh, out the front of the Silverstone paddock when his parents were um, just giving him a, a word of advice, perhaps, as he entered the track. Here's his sister, Flo. Both sisters, he's got two, are younger than him. Flo is a show jumping uh, rider and is quite talented in that respect. These kids have got pretty expensive hobbies, haven't they? Uh, car racing and jumping horses. None of those are, are particularly cheap endeavors. And his other sister on the left is Siska, named after mother. So mother and daughter are Siska. Here's the uh, family of four. Without the brother, Ollie, who is uh, pictured in a photo coming up. But I do remember this particular day, he just arrived in this McLaren and then he brought out his younger sister, Siska, and said, right, we'll go for a lap. So he and his younger sister went for a lap in this beautiful McLaren. I guess it was only just uh, into the track, somewhere around the track anyway. It wasn't on the track, but on the service roads. Here's the older brother, Ollie, uh, up here, as you can see. He's uh, sitting at this table. Now this was in Silverstone, and this is the Netflix people doing some vision of the group having lunch. Now, you'll see this next year. Oh, I imagine it's next year, or maybe late this year, the Netflix series Drive to Survive is due out. And if you love that series, you're gonna love this year because there have been so many great developments and so many interesting uh, stories to tell. And this was the, the day that they uh, followed Lando around at great uh, length for some time. Here's his manager, Mark Berryman. You saw Mark back here having lunch. This is his trainer, John Malvin. John with no H, J-O-N, John. Happy to smile for me, which is always good. He stays very close to his side in the garage. He's his go-to man. And in the paddock, often you'll see the two arriving, um, sometimes in the orange gear, sometimes in the white gear. Or occasionally, you'll see all three come in together, as is the case here. And they will eat together in the McLaren hospitality suite. And have a look here. You've got a beautiful meal for the two boys. And then Lando's got his very carefully prepared calorie-controlled meal of some vegetables and a wrap of some sort. And it's interesting to note too that Lando, like every driver, has a very definite schedule throughout each day. And it's detailed down to the last 10 minutes. It also includes early morning runs, as was the case here in Austin, where the three guys were out for an early morning run. Lando in that marvelous mask with one of the beautiful Austin buildings in the background. And I can tell you right now, this was a very, very cold morning. This was only a couple of degrees above zero. His teammate in the uh, McLaren team is Carlos Sainz and uh, a real great partnership, these two. They get on very well. On the left here is um, one of the press secretaries. This is Charlotte Sefton. And I love this shot of uh, Charlotte 
walking Lando back down the paddock after the race. He was perhaps a little disappointed with his effort in the Austin uh, United States Grand Prix. And so she's taking him under her wing and walking him back down the paddock. The other person you'll see Lando with, and this is a shot too from that very cold Thursday in Austin where it was zero degrees in the morning. And Lando's got a hoodie underneath that jacket that he's wearing there is Martin Pass on the right. Martin with a Y. Uh, unusual spelling, like Kim with a Y. Martin will often meet Lando at the back of the garage. He'll have with him a hat ready for him to put on after the session. And for FP1, 2 and 3, Martin or whoever it is that meets Lando will come with a voice recorder and they'll get Lando's thoughts on that particular session. And it's done the moment he exits the garage while those memories are still fresh. That's one of uh, a press secretary's job, is to get those um, insights the moment these drivers step out of the garage. And then he'll grab a watch and give it to him. This was, um, I think, after a race or a, a qualifying session where he had to go and do media. So when he's in public, he needs to be wearing this watch. And I like the look he had on his face here too. It's, uh, what are you doing taking a photo of me? He's wearing a Richard Meal watch. And that is uh, obviously a, because that's a sponsor of the team. At the back of the Singapore garage, after the Singapore GP, he's got Martin, he's got John, and he's got his father uh, to greet him after the race. And that's a very hard race for the racers in Singapore. They lose quite a bit of body weight in fluid. And uh, he was pretty darn warm when he got out of there. As opposed to this shot taken when it was very cold in the Austin GP. But still, he's, he's got a smile on his face. I think he feels the cold because uh, here's another shot on a not so cold day in Russia where he's decided to zip up his jacket right above um, his chin so that only his eyes are visible out the top. And if you have a look at his arms here, he's pulled down... This is also from uh, the Russian GP. He's pulled down his sleeves to cover his wrist. He's one of probably two thirds of the drivers that do a track walk. Here's another track walk shot of him in Sochi underneath the overpass. And with him on this walk, he's got Andrew Jarvis, this particular fellow here. And this is Henrik, I think it is, who does a lot of the social media videos for McLaren team walking with him. And typically they walk the track without stopping, but occasionally they'll come to a spot and in this case here, Andrew Jarvis, his um, engineer, will sit and go, or stand and go through some information about whatever that is, that particular corner. This is inside the stadium. And they'll run through a few strategies and it might take them a couple of minutes. And then bang, they move on to um, the next part of the circuit. Harking back to his teammate, Carlos Sainz, it's a beautiful relationship. It's one of the real fun ones in the paddock. And I remember this in Singapore, where the two had set up to do an interview, but before, I'm not sure which one, one of them has turned the other chair around so that Lando's back was towards Carlos and they posed for this particular picture. Often I see them on the grid before a race standing and having a, a little pre-race teammate chat. Now I don't see this with any other drivers, not to say that it doesn't happen, but I've not witnessed it where the two will stand there and talk some sort of strategies and I get to overhear this. And sometimes it's very interesting. Not that I would report it because that's not my job is to leak secrets, but uh, another opportunity here for a shot of the two having a pre-race conference in the rain on that most marvelous German Grand Prix this year, which was one of my favorites because there's so much happened, particularly on the last corner where I was stationed in the wet. They spend a little bit of time together too in the motorhome in Europe. Here they are playing um, some sort of racing game in the, uh, in the hospitality suite. And here he is wearing a Richard Meal watch while he's driving that simulator. I remember listening to him in one interview where he said Carlos had suggested, come out tonight, we're going to go out partying. And he said, no, I'd rather not. I'd rather go home and just play online, which he often does with this fellow, Max Verstappen. They race online together. And you've probably seen, if you're a social media fan of Lando's, oftentimes he talks about you know, how he's going in that particular venture uh, at that time, racing against Max online. I do like the fact that these two teammates are good characters. And if you hark back to a couple of races ago for me now, where are we? Round 17 in Japan. Remember that we lost a day of racing on Saturday because of the, uh, the typhoon. Well, earlier in the, in the event, they were asked to sign these posters, which were out the front of the paddock. And then they decided that they would each deface the other's poster. And it was a, a big post on Instagram where people were so keen to see what these two characters are up to. And it just goes to show that they are always engaged and always willing to have a bit of fun as teammates. He likes milk, we all know that. 
Uh, I did this particular shot at a race where I held up a milk uh, bottle here and I wanted Lando a little bit out of focus. But where did that come from? I did some research on it recently because I had no idea. And it turns out it came from this. Nothing to please you. A lot of milk, because I love milk. One particular mention. Nothing to please you. A lot of milk, because I love milk. A lot of milk, because I love milk. Now, from that one particular grab from a WTF1 video, which is a great channel, that has gone crazy. And there's so many comments on my page and on every page about Lando and his love of milk. He also is very hands-on in the design of his helmets. This was the last helmet design um, from the USGP. And I got to photograph it. And if you have a look closely, there are some rusty parts here made to look like rust. Now, that's actually textured. When you run your fingers over that, you can actually feel that it's not smooth. Now, obviously it doesn't have that much effect on any aerodynamics because they're allowed to get away with it. But Lando works very closely with his helmet designer on the design. So he doesn't just brief them, he goes further into it and he has real hands-on experience. Here's his racing shoes. He has these, this is the St. George Cross, I think you'll find, a stylized St. George Cross and the number four. And uh, I took this in the garage once and there's uh, quite a nice reflection there that I like. When he's not wearing racing shoes, he's wearing these shoes from On Running. On Running is a sponsor of uh, the McLaren team, but I've got to tell you, I wear their shoes because uh, the ones I need are waterproof, and they do make a waterproof pair, and they are brilliant shoes, and oh, I don't know, they must weigh a couple of hundred grams, hardly anything. And for me, when I'm walking 10 to 20 kilometres a day in F1, they are absolutely essential. He, like a lot of drivers, does not like shots of him in balaclava. I think a lot of drivers are the same, they just don't like those particular shots. But he was more than happy to put on this little face mask at the recent Mexican GP. Now, uh, I can tell you that he was about three or four metres away from the swipe gates and coming towards me, and he had it around his neck. And I noticed that when he went to this particular corporate meeting upstairs, uh, I think it was in one of the function centres and he had to talk for 10 minutes, that he had it wrapped around his neck and I thought maybe when he comes back he'll have it up because he had threatened on social media that he would wear it at some point. And sure enough, as he came through the swipe gate, he put it on and then at this point, he's probably only worn it for five metres, I've got three or four frames, good frames, uh, interesting photo and it went well on my Instagram account. He's grabbed it and he's pulled it down. So really, there was only a three second interval where he had it on and maybe he wore it for about five metres and then walked back to his uh, or right of screen here, back to the hospitality suite. Here's something that I had no idea about until after the Mexican GP, when I was invited to go and shoot the salmon. What is the salmon, you ask? Well, it's a ritual that happens after every race with the McLaren teammates here. The guys gather, Lando runs, jumps into their arms, and they hold him up like a salmon. And this particular race, they decided to tickle him and made him carry on like an absolute kid. So it was, it was a great opportunity to shoot him relaxed uh, with his teammates around. And I think that's the sort of things that people like to see, that fun sort of element. Now you don't get that with a lot of drivers because they're perhaps much more serious, but this fellow is 19 at the moment, nearly 20, and he's really enjoying his time um, laughing and carrying on. And if there's anyone that can make him laugh, it is the man on the, the right here, Daniel Ricciardo. I think Daniel's got his measure. You would have seen a couple of times this year where he's cracked him up in press conferences, and it's a great relationship. They're marvellous fellas, both of them. Let's go to some other shots I've taken of him, relaxed shots of him swinging his uh, pass as he comes into the uh, track each day. He likes to do that. I love it when he looks me straight down the lens, and I do get a number of photos where he connects with my camera. As a photographer, you want that uh, intimacy of them looking straight at your lens, and you can tell when they're not looking exactly at you. But uh, I've certainly got my fair share of shots where um, he's had some fun with me. And no more so than this particular shot here. Uh, I had this pumpkin that I'd bought at a CVS store in America. And I thought, well, I'll take it down. It's Halloween, it's the 31st of October, and everyone was talking Halloween. So I cut out the back uh, with a hole, and I stuck my camera lens through it, and I could see him walking towards me, so I, I had my camera up with this pumpkin, holding it in spot, and I wanted to place his head in the area where the nose had been cut out. I actually enlarged that a little bit. And he came straight towards me, and he got down low, and at this point, he, he's just about to say, 
Can you see anything from there? Well, as you can see, yes, you can see his face. And I did try it too with George Russell, who stopped and smiled for me, and Lance Stroll, who completely ignored it. But um, I didn't actually make any real attempt with Lance. That was my first test shot. He's not a bad pool player either, Lando. I shot him, um, where are we here, Russia, in Sochi at his hotel, playing pool. There's John Malvin, his trainer in the background. Uh, he enjoys a game of pool. He's not uh, world class or anything at it, um, but he, he certainly had some fun that day and I enjoyed shooting him at a, at a time when he was pretty much relaxed. Here's a lovely shot that uh, I fluked in a very wet morning uh, in Mexico. He came in through the gates. Now obviously this shot is that. It's, um, you can't see the top of the shot, but he's, uh, I shot it quite long, but I was focusing on the reflection below here. And he got about 10 metres from me, and I said, oh, Lando, could you walk towards me, perhaps through that puddle? He said, yeah, sure. So he walks towards me, puts his foot in the puddle, and it's an interesting photo, and certainly when most people saw it on my feed, and then again, perhaps uh, later on his feed, it took them a little while to work out what they were looking at. Because when you look at it, it looks like just a grainy photo of him walking, and then you see down the bottom here, hang on, there's legs down the bottom here too, and they connect. Oh, I get it, you flip the photo, and if you actually have a look in the background here, the F1 logo has been flipped, and that's a function of it being a reflection. I love this photo, I took it uh, recently in Austin, of him walking lonesome across the paddock. Now, I've got to tell you, it's very rare that you get the paddock that clear of people. So that was early in the morning. I shot blindly, I had the camera pretty much on the ground. I had pre-focused to uh, where I thought he would walk across. And I was lucky that he happened to walk across, not look at me. I think it would have been better um, as it is now where he doesn't look at me. And curiously enough, there's a male right underneath his legs, perfectly positioned. I was also lucky to get this particular shot at the French GP. He had a very good qualifying session. He'd done all his media interviews and he was heading back to the um, hospitality suite. And Zach Brown, the team principal, happened to meet him halfway along and I got this lovely hug. And luckily, I was on the side that we had Lando's face because I think he is probably more the story than, than Zach, although I would have settled for Zach's face facing the camera, but I think it's a better pick because A, uh, you're getting the star, the, the young driver, and then you're also getting some beautiful light on his face. And interestingly enough, because he is uh, 19 years of age, uh, in some countries he can't drive a, a rental car, so um, oftentimes he'll come in with his team, sitting in the back seat uh, with one of them driving in the front. Oh, and the other thing was the champagne. What would have happened if he'd ended up on the podium at the Austin GP, where the minimum drinking age is 21. Would he have been able to have a drink out of that champagne bottle if indeed that was alcohol? Would they have given him perhaps lemonade in there and allowed him to spray it round? Who knows, it didn't happen, but there was uh, much chat about what would happen if he made the podium in Austin. Lando Norris, a likeable guy, great future in front of him with F1, and I certainly enjoy photographing him. Remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future YouTube videos. Your comments are always appreciated and encouraged. You can own any of my images by heading to ProStarPix.com. If you're in Australia, you can buy prints or digital images. Elsewhere in the world, buy the digital image, get it printed yourself, it's great value. My blogs and podcasts are at KimElman.com and you'll see my pics live from the track and all through the week on Instagram at KimElman. Thanks for watching and stay passionate. Thank you.